The COP4 and Millennium Hotel chain says it's been forced to cut 70% of its 1,300-strong workforce due to COVID-19. It blames hotel occupancy rates, which fell from 87% in February to just 1.5% in April. It comes as Intercity's owner says it has already been forced to lay off 80 staff with further cuts possible. The bus company will resume 70% of its network from Thursday onwards. The Entrada Travel Group Chief Executive John Thorburn says services may run at a loss, partly due to reduced seating to comply with social distancing rules. Without extra government help, Thorburn says the company may be forced to look at further downsizing. He told our reporter Nick Trubridge they just have to get back up and running. We haven't been operating for this up until this point, but we appreciate how critical city services are to our network and to the communities and in the absence of any specific uh, progress uh, we had to make a decision to just actually start some services running for the good of our communities. And you said some services may be running at a loss so how long can you sustain that? I mean when you read that it looks like it like it could be something that you would have to resolve fairly quickly. How long can you keep that up? Yeah, not indefinitely, and we are hopeful of, A, that there would be a natural increase in demand as people became more confident to travel again, but B, that that support would be forthcoming eventually and that will help us carry on those services. What sort of support will you be hoping for from the government? Obviously, I believe you've had some of the subsidy, but in terms of support to uh, you know avoid running these services at a, at a loss for too long, what sort of help will you be seeking? Well, it's just a simple calculation, really, which comes down to you know how much can you generate off uh, restricted services versus the cost of running, and that will vary between particular services in particular parts of the country. So. Uh, you can imagine that could be a, co- a calculation that would need to be done for every part of the network, but uh, that's pretty much how it would work. What say the government isn't able to to help you more than it than it ever ha- uh, than it already has? What then? Well, in the absence of any ongoing support, uh, the effect will probably be that we would have to make some decisions about where and how and what reach we could achieve with our network and. Whilst we'll do our very best to have the broadest network that we can, there'll be some parts of that network and some frequency of services that may have to be compromised. So, with, I mean, without government support, you would you would effectively be re-looking at the business and, and figuring out how it could, could keep going without that support? That's exactly right. We would do our best to keep as much of the network as we can available, but we would need to make some serious uh, decisions about the extent of the network we could offer. Would that result in, in job losses potentially? Uh, that's, it's too early to say that. That would depend on the nature of uh, the limitations to the service, uh, but that's, that's a possibility. Does that mean to date uh, the, you know, the, the company hasn't had to, to let any, any of its staff go? No, there have been examples where we have had to downsize our operations. As you probably appreciate, we also uh, operate in tourism activities as well, and those have been significantly affected by uh, the border closures. So, yes, we have had to uh, look at making changes across the organisation. And how many staff are affected by that? Uh, I would have to confirm, but I believe that uh, it would probably be in the order of about 80 staff. There are still uh, people receiving the subsidy uh, for roles that ultimately won't be um, sustained. So we are taking advantage of the su- subsidy to provide a softer landing for those those uh, staff. And if I book a ticket for say Christmas, so that's what just over just over six months' time, you're you're confident that I would be able to travel, that you will be you will still be going by then. Oh, that's our intention, absolutely. But, of course, the situation is unravelling at a great speed and uh, no-one can predict exactly what state we will be in then, but we're very hopeful that all things going well, we'd be up and running with a, you know, a good extensive coverage. 
And in terms of the social distancing, uh, you know, measures that will be taken on the services that are running, uh, what will those look like? How where, where will I be sitting on the bus if I'm if I'm catching it from Auckland, say, to Wellington, and how far away will I be from my neighbour? Yeah. So the protocols that we've put in place mean that effectively there will be a spare seat between all individual parties on the bus. So there won't be proximity in terms of sitting next to somebody while the physical distancing rules are in place. In addition to that, we have other lines of defence, if you like, in the sense that we have very robust contact tracing, as you can imagine, because people need to give full details and booking the service and, of course, you know, regular cleaning of coaches as well. So there's a, a range of interventions that we're doing to ensure that everybody's safe. And that's Entrada Travel Group Chief Executive John Thorburn speaking with our reporter Nick Truebridge.